Hello and welcome to my live broadcasting. Welcome everybody. God bless everyone, including the Muslims who always curse us in their prayers and hearts. We know that today Muslims are celebrating Eid al-Adha, the celebration of sacrificing animals. Please let me know if you can hear me. Tell me in the live chat if the sound is loud and clear. Please give me a one if you can hear me. Please let me know. All right, all right. So it's showtime. Today we're going to teach you about what Muslims call Eid al-Adha. So on this live broadcasting, we will have the opportunity to have a nice teaching and we will go through some Islamic sources to understand the meaning and purpose of Eid al-Adha, which is the Islamic festival of animal sacrifice. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching and only if I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat about Islam or the mentioned topic of today. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. Muslims can also call us, of course, live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian without separation. Maybe the admin can give my Skype ID in the live chat. So please call me, only Muslims, please call me when I'm done teaching. All right. So what is Eid al-Adha? What is Eid al-Adha? What do we understand by Eid al-Adha? What is that exactly, Muslims? That is the day that you sacrifice animals, right? As you see here in the background. You see here Muslims uh, who have nice big sticks uh, surrounding a poor animal, in this case in a camel, to sacrifice him. Look how they are bind their, his, his foot, right? His leg, so he will not kick them because, you know, it's a big animal. And he will start kicking when he knows he's in danger. What kind of a disgusting ritual this is. You see all these men, you know? Really, courage men. These men, if, if at least one of them would have called me, we could have had a nice discussion today, right? To defend his uh, deen, his faith, which is Islam. Here's another picture. See how many Muslims are around one camel, poor camel, who is about to get sacrificed. This is really cruel, guys. Look how they are binding him so he can't go anywhere, so he can't kick them or knock, uh, knock them out, right? Because, you know, an animal, it's an animal he will sense when he's in danger, right? So they need to tie him up before they cut I don't want to show you, uh, by the way, they are, I found really damaging uh, pictures, really shocking pictures, how the blood gushes out. So I want to spare you that today. But they basically, if you see the cursor of my mouse, they put a knife here in this place, when it's a camel like this, and the blush starts to gush out. Can you see the picture in front of you? Cruelty, man. I mean, is this an animal to be sacrificed? Not a mercy. So yeah, uh, why do Muslims actually sacrifice animals on this day? Because they today they are basically started to sacrifice uh, goats, sheep, camels, and whatnot. Why are they, they doing that? Let's see what they are why they are doing that. I went to this website, which is Islami help.org.uk so this website is made in the UK and if you want to read with me what is Qurbani? Qurbani or 
Udhiya, as it is known in Arabic, is the word that describes the sacrifice of an animal, an animal to Allah. And they say this is not a blood sacrifice. You know, Muslims don't believe in blood sacrifice. So that's true. We're going to see if Muslims actually do believe or do not believe in something called blood sacrifice. They say they don't, but today we'll see if that's true. We're going to see if we can expose this claim, right? So during the period of Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Adha, on Eid al-Adha, which marks the completion of the annual Hajj pilgrimage, so when Muslims go to Hajj, to Mecca, they go around the Kaaba seven times, and to complete all this, the Muslim world celebrates and honors the tradition of the Prophet Ibrahim, which, you know, it's Abraham, but they call him Ibrahim, alayhi salam, alayhi salam, by sacrificing an animal and distributing the meat to those in need. Who should perform Qurbani? The general rule is that the Qurbani should be performed by adults of sane mind and affordable means. So if you have money and you're uh, okay in your mind, you, sh you can do it as an adult. The Hanafi ulama say it is wajib, it's obligatory. While the other schools of jurisprudence say it's sunnah. So, you know, they don't even agree on why. Why they have to do it. So some of scholars say this. Other scholars say this. So however it's generally agreed. That if a person can afford Qurbani. They should perform it. If you have any questions or doubts. You can consult a local sheikh or imam. He will answer it. So uh, this, this celebration guys. This celebration is really big business. You can, if, if you can see here. If you click on this button here. You can actually buy uh, one seventh of a cow or a bull for 25 pounds. It's big business for, uh, for the Islamic world, right? To perform this celebration. So I went to another website and someone is asking to this sheikh or sheikha, whatever she is, is the blood of sacrificed animals meant to forgive our sins? So a Muslim is asking, is sacrificing animals in Islam is it meant to forgive our sins for the year? Like the Yom Al-Kapur? Yom Al-Kapur of the Jews? So are we basically doing the same what Jews do? Because Jews do this uh, for their sins, right? And if you follow uh, the news lately, the Jews started to actually uh, sacrifice, sacrifice an animal on the altar after 2,000 years, right? Uh, according to the Old Testament, Jews used to sacrifice a red heifer, which is a complete red uh, young cow, basically. So here, this Muslim is asking, are we, are we doing the same that Jews do? And this consultant or sheikha, whatever her name is, Dina Muhammad Baisyuni, is going to answer and say, short answer, Muslims sacrifice an animal to commemorate the events that happened to Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Ibrahim submitted to the will of Allah, his son did too. And they don't know, they also differ, scholars differ actually, in their tafsir, who this son actually is. Is, is it Ishmael? Is it uh, Isaac? We don't know. Allahu alam. Right? That's their answer Allah alam who it is you know it could be Ishmael but it could also be uh, Isaac <laughs> Lord have mercy so they have to differ who this son is and when he was about to slaughter his son Allah spared him of doing so so Allah did not allow Ibrahim to slaughter his son Isaac or Ishmael we don't know right Allah alam Allah knows best. He ransomed his son with a great sacrifice that he sent. He dipan azim, 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 you know? Dipan azim. That's what they say, what they call it in the Arabic. The point of this whole event is not to 
the animal itself or its meat or blood, but rather God consciousness. It's an occasion of mercy, mercy, sharing and remembrance of the mercy of God. So according to this website, the answer is no. So it, it has nothing to do with sacrifice, right? Or blood sacrifice, right? That's the answer, basically, to this question of this gentleman. But is this true? Can we expose the lie of these scholars, these shiyukh, who say that when you sacrifice an animal on this day, Eid al-Adha, it's not about blood sacrifice. Now, if we go to the Quran, we're going to expose that. I hope there is a Muslim who will call me after this teaching, who can uh, refute me on that. If we go to chapter 5, ayah 27, chapter 5, from Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, ayah 27, it says, And recite to them the story of Adam's two sons, who are Cain and Abel, right? In truth, when they both offered a sacrifice to Allah, remember this is not in the Arabic, Whenever you see something between brackets, that means it has been added extra by the translator, which is in this case three women who are, according to the Prophet of Islam, uh, who made this translation. They are half brain, right? The Prophet said about women in Islam, they are half brain. So, and since this is the most often used translation in the world for the Quran, why would you put your trust? Why would you put your trust as a Muslim in three women who translated this important book of Allah, right? That doesn't make sense anyway, but that's, that's off topic. So this word is not in the Arabic and it was accepted from one of them, but was not accepted from the other. Said the letter, also this word is not in the trans, uh, original Arabic, I will surely kill you. So the one son says that to the other son of Adam, I will kill you said the former indeed Allah only accept from the righteous so Allah only accepted a, the sacrifice from one of the sons not both sacrifice and if we go to the tafsir of this ayah if we go to tafsir al-jalalain tafsir al-jalalain chapter 5 ayah 27 the same chapter we can read the following from tafsir al-jalalain and recite, O Muhammad, to them, your people, the story, the tale of the two sons of Adam, Abel and Cain. So it's about Abel and Cain. Truthfully, Bilhaq is semantically connected to what will recite how they each offered a sacrifice to God, which in Abel's case was a ram, and in Cain's, some green crops. So Allah, as you see in front of you, Allah accepted the sacrifice of Abel, the son of Adam, but he did not accept Cain's sacrifice, who sacrificed green crops. I think Cain didn't know that Allah didn't like vegetables, right? Allah was hungry only for meat. He didn't want to eat vegetables, you know? When you were a kid, you didn't like to eat vegetables. And your mom starts to have a small war with you. You know, you have to eat vegetables. They are good for you. In this case, Allah is it's like that baby who doesn't like his vegetables. <laughs> what a mess. So, and it was accepted from one of them, namely from Abel, when fire came down from heaven. And consumed, consumed his offering. So here, it is about blood sacrifice, as you see. Right? Because Allah took that sacrifice of Abel that was a ram, right? It was a ram. So any Muslim who wants to say it's not about blood sacrifice, it seems that Allah actually wants to have himself some delicious meat of ram, as you see in front of you. A mighty ram, right? A mighty ram. Guys, do you remember that uh, song from the 90s by Salt and Pepper, which was called 
what a man, what a mighty man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty man. In this case, it's a mighty ram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminded me of that uh, song. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, uh, I was having a, a nice time in the nineties, guys. What can we do? You know, I'm a human. So if <laughs> if we go to the hadith, guys, if we go to the hadith, and this is Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih hadith. No doubt about it. This is authentic, right? Sahih. The Prophet said. Adam and Moses debated with each other, and Moses said, You are Adam who turned out your offspring from paradise. Adam said, You are Moses whom Allah chose for his message and for his direct talk. Yet you blame me for a matter which had been ordained for me even before my creation. Thus Adam overcame Moses. So as you see, the Prophet of Islam actually believes in the original sin. Right? Because Adam and Eve sinned against God and they were kicked out of heaven. And as you see here, Moses is attacking Adam and saying to him, Hey, you're the one who caused us to be kicked out of paradise. From Jannah, right? It's because of you. Then Adam says, No, no, it's not because of me. It was ordained by Allah for me. So who is the one to be blamed? It is Allah. Allah made Adam sin against himself, against Allah. Another hadith will say 40 years before the creation of Adam, right? Because this hadith has been mentioned in other sources too that are very trustworthy in Islam, right? And this is not from the mouth of Rob Christian, this is from the mouth of of the Prophet of Islam. He's the one saying this. So as you see, the Prophet of Islam actually did believe in the original sin. Any Muslim who will say and wants to go against the Prophet of Islam, who actually did believe in the original sin. So as you see, and as we mentioned earlier, the, the Prophet of Islam believed in the original sin of Adam. And Adam is saying it's not me who did it, it's Allah. Go blame Allah. He's the one who put this on me. So, you know, why would you do, have to do a sacrifice in Islam, right? Allah will remove you from Islam if he wants. He can cause you to sin in Islam. It's all, always Allah. Allah is the puppet master and you're nothing but a slave. You're nothing but a puppet in the hands of the puppet master. Allah, in this case. Right? And as you saw here, Allah did actually accept blood sacrifice. Right? If we go to another ayah from the Quran, chapter 37, ayah 107, it says, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ azim azim." Right? And we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. So it seems that when Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son Ishmael or Isaac, we don't know, right? Scholars differ in Islam. It was not Abraham who sacrificed, it was Allah. He is the one ransoming, and he is the one actually sacrificing so when Allah sacrificed to who, he, to who does he sacrifice I mean when I sacrifice or a Muslim sacrifice he sacrificed to Allah I sacrifice to, uh, to a God of the Bible Jews sacrifice to the God of the Bible well, actually we Christians don't sacrifice because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice right we Christians have, don't have to do that anymore but when we do it or if we did it, or have done it, like the Jews, they do it to God. But when God does it, the God of Islam, Allah, to, he, to who does he ransom? Right? That's the question that we need to ask to the Muslims. Muslims, when Allah ransomed 
when he paid the money because you know when you do a ransoming you basically pay something right it's a payment right so to who did Allah ransom to another God maybe to himself you know when we talk about Allah and the angels pray on Muhammad yusalluna ala nabi Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Allah and the angels pray on the prophet I think this is the same right same concept so to who does Allah pray and to who does Allah ransom when he ransomed this great sacrifice and why is it a great sacrifice I mean, it's only a ram, right? But we know why it's a great sacrifice. Because Muhammad was nothing but a bad copy-paste machine. He stole this from the Christians. Right? Because it was talking in context about Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate sacrifice, who came in the flesh to die and remove the sins, take the sins on himself, so we can live for eternity in his new kingdom. You see, when you are a fake prophet, you are nothing but a copy-paste machine prophet like Muhammad. You are going to copy-paste from here, from there, and you are going to bust yourself. So Muslims, why is this so great sacrifice? I mean, it's only a ram. We Christians have the answer, right? Well, Muslims, you really need to think, right? Islam is nothing but a copy-paste religion by a copy-paste prophet, a fake prophet, right? And we know why Muhammad put this in the Quran, because he wanted to reconcile with the Christians and the Jews. This is why you can find this in the Quran. He wanted to show the Christians and the Jews that he is actually a true prophet. Yes, I mean, even the pagans used to uh, do sacrifices, right? It, it was always about blood sacrifice. From the very beginning, as we showed you, right? When we talked about the two sons who sacrificed a ram and the other one sacrificed green vegetables and Allah wanted to have the meat it has been always about blood sacrifice even if you're pagan you're going to sacrifice an animal even in a pre-islamic era they used to sacrifice animals but Muslims dare to say no 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 it has nothing to do about it's not about blood sacrifice which is a lie as we showed you from the Quran and the, and the Tafsir. And we showed you also that Muhammad did actually believe in sacrificing animals. Sorry, uh, in the original sin of Adam, as we showed you in the Hadith. But Muslims always go against their Prophet. Right? So I really want to know, Muslims, why is this such a great, azim sacrifice? Why? Muslims can't say. If we go to the tafsir, guys, if we go to the tafsir by Ibn Kathir, this is the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, or this ayah, we can read the following. And we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. Dipan, azim, azim, azim. It was reported that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, A ram which had graced in paradise for 40 years. So according to Tafsir of Ibn Kathir, saying what was reported by Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, that ram was having some nice grass in the paradise for 40 years. Imam Ahmad recorded that Safiya bint Shayba said, A woman from Bani Sulaim, who was the midwife of most of the people in our household, told me that the Messenger of Allah sent for Uthman bin Talha, may Allah be pleased with him. On one occasion, she said, I asked Uthman, why did the Prophet call you? He said, Okay, a lot of blah blah. But as you see, this is the ram 
that was so-called very mighty, mighty Oran. But Tafsir Jalalain for the same ayah does not agree. So again, we have disagreement among the early scholars. This is Tafsir Jalalain for the same chapter, chapter 37, ayah 107, uh, same chapter, same ayah. Then we arise in him the one whom he had been commanded to sacrifice, not, namely Ishmael or Isaac. Did you remember when I said to you Ishmael or Isaac? So they actually do not agree if it's Ishmael or Isaac. Al Jalalain has two opinions about it, right? But Ibn Kathir, if we go down, he says in his tafsir, it is no doubt, let me see if I can find it quickly, no doubt the sacrifice was Ishmael. You see that? It was Ishmael, peace be upon him. Again, so here, Tafsir ibn Kathir is in no doubt, it must be Ishmael, right? But if we go to another Tafsir, like we showed you from <laughs> Jalalain, there are many scholars who tend to differ. There are two different opinions. It could be Ishmael or Isaac. What kind of religion is this, guys? They don't know if it's Ishmael or Isaac. What kind of Allah this is? Allah must be the worst communicator in history. And the proof is in front of you. Because the scholars cannot agree if it's Ishmael or Isaac. That's, that's strange. So, two different opinions. Two names. <laughs> Lord have mercy. With a mighty sacrifice, a mighty ram. And why is it a mighty ram? I mean, last time we checked, only God is almighty when it comes to religion. Now, we have a mighty holy ram from paradise. The same one that Abel had offered as a sacrifice. Jibril, peace be upon him, brought it. And the Lord Abraham sacrifices as he cried, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. So Abraham was saying Allah Akbar. Can you show us from the Bible where Abraham said Allah Akbar? <laughs> Lord of mercy. Oh, man. So, instead of fixing the problem, guys, the tafsir boys, the tafsir that is like Al Jalalain and Ibn Kathir are making it even more worse. They are causing more confusion because you need to understand that Tafsir came into existence to defend Islam, but they are making it even more worse. I mean, if you, I mean, you are a normal Muslim and you want to know and, and learn about this religion and you come every time you, you come across these different opinions. You're going to be very confused Muslim, right? If you study Islam carefully. What kind of religion is this that is nothing but a com big confusion? Right? And why is it a mighty ram? I, I'm, I'm still, I still don't understand why it's a mighty ram. I mean, should not only Allah be mighty? So it's a mighty ram? Lord have mercy. Let us go to <clears throat> chapter 17, Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 15. Whoever chooses to be guided, it is only for their own good. And whoever chooses to stray, it's only to their own loss. No soul burdened with sin will bear the burden of another's sin. So, when we talk about sins, guys, when we talk about sins, according to Allah here in this Quran, in this ayah, I cannot put my sin on you, right? My sins are only for myself. If I commit a sin, you should not be judged by that sin of mine. You're going to be judged according to this ayah. For your own sins only. 
and if we go to a different ayah it also says from chapter 35 ayah 18 and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another so this ayah as you see agrees with this ayah did you catch it so you cannot be punished for my sins right but if we go to what the prophet of islam said and i went to islam q a dot info and this Shaykh Muhammad Salih al Munajjid is teaching that the hadith in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 27, 67 in Sahih Muslim, narrated for Abu Musa from the Prophet. So look what the Prophet of Islam is going to say. Who said, so Muhammad said, guys, take notes, please. On the day of resurrection, some of the Muslims will come with sins like mountains. So the Muslims will come with sins like mountains. But Allah will forgive them and will put them, put the sins on the Jews and the Christians. Wait a second. We found a contradiction. So here, the Prophet of Islam just contradicted the Quran of Allah. Remember, the Quran of Allah says, no one can bear the sins of anybody else. Your sins are for you only. But here, Muhammad, and this is Sahih, right? Sahih Hadith, Sahih Muslim. He says that the sins of the Muslims will be put on the Jews and the Christians. This is a huge, huge contradiction. So can we say that Muhammad is a fake prophet going against his own Allah? Yes, we can. And here, this is the hadith actually. So Muslims can't say, hey, you're using a false uh, website. No, no, it, Islam q and is a, an official Salafi website with a Salafi sheikh explaining the hadith. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2767. You see the same hadith? Read with me. There would come people amongst the Muslims. This is from Muhammad's mouth saying. There would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection with as heavy sins as mountain. And Allah would forgive them. Forgive the Muslims. Forgive who? The Muslims. And who would place in their stead the Jews and the Christians. So as you see, the sins of the Jews, sorry, the sins of the Muslims will be put on the Jews and the Christians. Did you catch it? Why is Muhammad contradicting the Quran of Allah in this hadith? Why? You call him a prophet? Is this a prophet? Who contradicts the Quran over and over? I mean, the Bible or our holy God from the Bible. We know what would have happened to such a prophet, right? He would have been stoned to death by the Jews. Why do Muslims not kill Muhammad for contradicting, busting the balls basically of Allah? Sorry for using that word, guys. What kind of religion is this where you have a prophet and they call him the final prophet, the seal of all prophets who kept contradicting his own Quran, saying that the sins of Muslims that are as heavy as mountains will be put on the Jews and the Christians. This is a huge contradiction, Muslims. You need to wake up. If I would have been really sincere with my salvation, about my salvation and I see this as a Muslim and I am sincere with myself I have respect for my own salvation I have respect for my own brains I would have not stayed in Islam for a split second because this is a huge problem you know and Muslims dare to say as we showed you in the beginning they dare to say that Eid al-Adha is not about blood sacrifice it has nothing to do with blood sacrifice. But if we go to the Quran, guys, 
For example, chapter 9, ayah 5, Surah at tawbah Surah at sword Surah at save that's the other nickname for this chapter. Ayah 5, it says, And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists, kill the pagans. Isn't this basically blood sacrificing people for this religion? Kill them because they don't want to accept Islam. Kill them because they are criticizing Muhammad. You know, Muhammad ordered people to be killed for only writing, criticizing poetry about him. Right? Like Um Qurfa, the very old lady that was around, let's say, 100 years, political correct guys. Some sources say she was 120 years. Muhammad's men, Muhammad's Sahaba, they split her in half. They bound both her legs, right? And two camels. One camel went that way and the other camel went the other way. And that poor old lady was split in half. Isn't this basically a blood sacrifice? Because you don't accept Islam? You don't accept Muhammad to be a true prophet? Yes, it is. And what about this ayah from chapter 8, ayah 67? It's not for a prophet, Muhammad. Guys, please take note. This is very damaging stuff. It's not for a prophet to have captives of war until he inflicts a massacre in the land. So, if you go to the Arabic, the, the land, guys, the, the ground needs the blood of people, of the captives of Muhammad. So, according to this ayah, Muhammad should not have captives. And in this case, the men, right? The earth must drink the blood of the enemies of Muhammad. So, Muhammad is not even allowed to have captives. Isn't this basically a blood sacrifice? Sacrificing people because they don't want to accept you as a prophet? Sacrificing your own enemies? Guys, if you have troubles with um, the quality, put the screen on 720p. You will get a better quality screen when, while you're watching. And if we go to the last ayah, guys, and we will wrap it up. Chapter 9, ayah 14, it says, Fight them. Allah will punish them by your hands and will disgrace them. Disgrace who? The enemies of Muhammad. And give you victory over them and satisfy the breasts of believing people so if you if you are uh, having a bad day guys according to this ayah you have a bad day as a muslim allah will satisfy your bloodthirst by killing by fighting and killing people isn't this a form of blood sacrifice killing people who don't want to accept Muhammad? Right? Well, it is a sacrifice, right? Because, as we showed you, the earth must have blood. يَثْخِنَ فِيهَا الْأَرْضِ That means the earth must have, the land must have blood. It is thirsty for blood. It needs blood. The blood must be spilled. The blood of non-Muslims. So yes, it is a blood sacrifice. It's a killing, butchering cult. It's all about blood. You see? So this was the teaching for today, guys. I hope you had benefit and that you now understand how Muhammad actually tried to copy the Jews who were doing the sacrifice, right? In the Old Testament. 
and it's a big business look how many people there are there Eid al-Adha is a big business and why are they calling it Eid al-Adha why because they are sacrificing Muslims you know when they get uh, let's say uh, you will have a son or a daughter as a Muslim you're going to sacrifice a goat or maybe a sheep for her or him if it's a, young, uh, a son right they also sacrifice when it's Ramadan when Ramadan is over they also sacrifice so why do they call this Eid al-Adha right the celebration of sacrifice so it's not only on, on this day when they sacrifice. They are sacrificed in many uh, celebrations, right? So even the name doesn't make sense. So if there are Muslims, you can now call me on Skype. My Skype is the Rob Christian. And if you have any questions, uh, you have any questions in the text, guys, please fire away and I will try to answer some questions. Guys, also don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell so you will get notifications when I go live or upload videos. Let's see if we can get some questions from the text. Thank you, Word Changer. God bless you too. Thank you very much. God bless you and your family. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who will say that Eid al-Adha is not about blood sacrifice. Any Muslim who wants to refute me? Hmm? Sorry if I missed um, questions during uh, the live chat, guys, when I was teaching. So, my apologies for that. Fadi Harun is asking, didn't Muhammad attack a caravan on the sacred month? Well, basically, according to, uh, to the ayah that we read before, when the sacred months are passed, go and fight, right? I think it's in chapter 9, ayah 28. Ali Aron is asking, if Muslims don't do it for wiping their sins, then why do they do it? Only to commemorate what Abraham did? This part is confusing. Well, yeah, Abraham in Islam, guys, Abraham didn't sacrifice. As we showed you, it was Allah doing the sacrifice, right? And we ransomed him, Dibhan Adim, right? A mighty, a big sacrifice. So it wasn't Abraham, it was actually Allah who was sacrificing to Allah. Right? But the, actually, Muhammad was simply copying the Jews. It was Muhammad who was doing copy pasting to try to be friends with the Jews. But we, the Jews were not stupid. They rejected him. Right? The Jews of Medina rejected him. The Jews of um, Bani Nadir, the Jews of Bani Quraida. Right? And Muhammad expelled them all. And he even burned and cut off their trees. Yeah, Muhammad <laughs> commanded his people to kill Jews, yet he's here copying them. Yeah, funny, right? Muhammad was nothing but a hypocrite. He was a munafiq himself, right? And we know what Islam says about the munafiqs. Uh, Fadi Harun is asking, how Muhammad convinced his followers that Abraham built Kaaba? Well, Muslims... 1400 years ago uh, they were ignorant people right they used to live in tents they had no clue about who Abraham was you know so they would have believed everything that Muhammad said to them right the followers of Muhammad 
they would have believed everything. Right? And we know that Abraham and the sons, even the sons, the sons of his son, Ishmael, who went to Egypt with his mother, Hagar, even they did not go to Saudi Arabia, or in this case, Mecca or Medina. Abraham did not go to Mecca or Medina. His son Ishmael did not go there. And in one of my other videos, I showed you when I rebuked uh, Shushu or Shamsi. I love to call him Shushu. I don't know why. When he was talking about Kedar, right? One of the sons of Ishmael is called Kedar. But Kedar didn't go to Saudi Arabia or Arabia. He stayed up north in Jordan. And that area was named after him. Kedar. Right? So Abraham had nothing to do with Mecca. He had nothing to do with the Kaaba. Because show me one Jew who believes in the Kaaba. Show me one Bible verse that mentions Kaaba. Right? Is there any Muslim who wants to call us? And want, because before I started this live show, there was a Muslim who wanted to call me. Where is the Muslim? He's hiding now? Now I'm live and no Muslim wants to call me? I mean, my Skype is open. Come on, call me. Welcome, Rene. Welcome, others who just joined in. We finished the teaching uh, for the people who, who just joined. We follow, finished the teaching. So if you want to uh, watch the teaching, you can watch the show again when we are finished, right? It needs some time to uh, be proce processed by YouTube. And then you can also see the live chat. It will be replayed, right? Are there more questions, guys, in the text? That we can answer for you? Yeah, if there is any Muslim, you can call me on my Skype. My Skype ID is the Arab Christian. Is there any Muslim? Now is the time to call me and refute me. Or maybe you want to tell us why you think that Muhammad is a true prophet. Is there any Muslim? Islam Safari is saying, any Muslim in the bushes? <laughs> Come on. I mean, are you telling me all the Muslims are busy slaughtering uh, animals at this moment? Are they so, so busy slaughtering animals? Maybe they are here in the crowd having some nice time with a camel. You know, guys, I found so, so many shocking uh, pictures that I could have used, but I really wanted to spare all the bloodshed for you, right? And I'm not sure how YouTube would handle that, right? If we put such pictures. Uh, Fadi Harun is asking, Rob Christian, have you watched Dan Gibson's material that shows Kaaba was in Petra, not in modern day Mecca? What do you think about it? Actually, Fadi, yes, I've, I've uh, done some research about it. And uh, I know about this uh, for a long time now. Uh, actually, Dan Gibson, he went with... Uh, military grade equipment, military grade GPS system. And he went to all the early, most earliest uh, mosques that were built. He went to even to China. He went to all the most oldest mosques. And all those mosques, one by one, they, the Qibla, which is the basically the direction of prayer. You have something called in a mosque, Qibla, guys. And you have to pray towards that to face Mecca. And that particular place was facing Petra, which is in Jordan. 
Maybe a Muslim can answer this question. Why is that? Why did the early mosques face Petra and not Mecca? But the much later built mosques started to face Mecca. You know? And why do we not find the name Mecca in any map, on any map from the time of Muhammad? Why do we start to find the name Mecca when Caliph al Malik was in power? Even the name Muhammad, the first time that we started to see the name Muhammad was on the Dome of the Rock. And that Dome of the Rock that you can find now in Jerusalem was built by Al Malik, Caliph Al Malik. So the name of Muhammad was put on the name, uh, sorry, on the top of the Dome of the Rock for the first time. So, and even the, the name Muslims was not there. Those people used to be called Sarasin or Hagarin, Hagarin, Sarasin. We don't see anything called Mecca, we don't see anything called Muslims. And also, the oldest mosque did not face Mecca, they faced Petra, which is in Jordan. Yeah. I know Islam Safari, so I wanted to spare you from the disgusting pictures. You know, it's really disgusting. I've seen those pictures, I really almost uh, throw up. I'm honest with you. How they are slaughtering these pictures poor animals and they are laughing when they are slaughtering them right and they and they dare to say it's not about blood sacrifice no no it's not about blood sacrifice no no we only remember what happened with Abraham and his son and who which son we don't know right some scholars say it's Ishmael other scholars as we showed you say is Isaac so they don't even know about who they celebrate about who? Which son are you celebrating about? Was it Ishmael? Was it Isaac? We don't know. Allahu alam. Allah knows best. Right? Guys, I really hope that you uh, did not fall asleep. I really hope that you liked today's teaching. Because uh, it's a really big event now happening in the Islamic world. And I think it was not... Uh, bad to talk about it today and to give you some inside information and as you see Muslims are really busy hiding you know when we are not live they don't dare to call us even when I'm on discord guys I also go to discord I'm on couple discord service Muslims are hiding when they see my name they don't dare to come and debate me some of them actually have the courage so now and then but most of them are nothing but keyboard terrorists. That's what we call them in Discord, right? They love to chat, but they don't have the courage to come and debate me on mic. Why is that? Why are Muslims hiding? Why are there Imams hiding from us? I mean, are you telling me that Imams don't watch our videos? That's a big lie. I'm sure, I mean, I, I, I have like 4,000 subscribers now. Christian Prince, for example, has thousands and thousands of subscribers. What about David Wood? Why are the Imams not calling in to defend this religion? We are exposing Islam. We are causing a lot of Muslims to leave this cult. And no Imam at least once a week steps up to defend this religion, to end our careers. That's strange. Guys, I really want to thank also, I, can, I can't thank you enough. I really want to thank you for your donations. I received a really nice amount of donation. And finally, I could buy this PC, this really much faster PC that I used to own. Now I can do a nice stable live show for you. And I really want to thank you for your support. People are really have been good. And guys, don't forget to keep us in your prayers. Please pray for us. We are putting our lives here for 
you on the front lines to expose this cult, to help Muslims, to show Muslims the true face of Islam that Muslim scholars are hiding from them. Yeah, Fadi. Their prophet didn't teach them to debate. It's all, always about killing. Killing, take war booties, take Muslim, uh, sorry, take women as sex slaves. That's what Muslims have done. Right? Memorizing the Quran, trying to memorize the Quran by heart, but cannot answer one question when you ask them a question about it. I mean, everyone can memorize a book if he wants to. It maybe it will take you some time to memorize a book, right? But does that mean you have knowledge about it? No. And they are really proud about it. Where is the original Quran of Muhammad? Where is the Quran of Uthman? Where is the Quran of Hafs? Can I see it? I, wanna, I really want to read it. I mean, according to very trustful sources, Uthman gave the order to Zayd ibn Thabit to write nine perfect copies. Nine. Are you telling me not one copy survived? Guys, I'm going to do a really uh, detailed uh, teaching about the corruption of the Quran. Last time that I wanted to do that, my old PC crashed, as you noticed during that live stream. So I will do a longer part two because after 33 minutes or so, my PC crashed and the live stream died. So we will do a nice teaching and we will go to Islamic sources to show you that the Quran is corrupted. Muslims played with the Quran. They even started to play with the old manuscripts, like the top copy, like the Samarkand, like the Sana'a manuscript. All of them, they played with them. They changed words. They added words to try to standardize the text, I kid you not, to make it look like the Quran that was put together in 1924, the Hafs version that was written in 1924 in Cairo, Egypt. You know, they played with the Quran, they corrupted the Quran because there were many different Qurans, right? So they, they wanted to make a standardized Quran. So they started to play with the text. And there's a guy called... Um, Daniel Brubaker, he wrote a new book. You can go and buy it on Amazon. That material is so damaging for all the manuscripts. It's devastating. If Muslims actually cared about their salvation and cared about the truth, I advise any Muslim to go buy that book. You will see screenshots. You will see photos of those manuscripts where Muslims added words, new words to an old Quranic manuscript. Why would you do that? Would a Christian do that? I mean, did we do that to our manuscripts, our manuscripts for the Bible? No, we keep them intact, right? We don't play with the text, but Muslims actually played with them. They put dots on them, they added words that were missing to them, and Muslims dare to say the Quran is not changed, is not corrupted. Not even one dot is changed, which is a lie. And we are going to prove that to you in a future teaching. Let's see if we can answer some question, other questions. Guys, thank you for those lovely questions. They are really interesting and I'm happy uh, if I can ask them for you. Zoha, Zoha, you're a Muslim, right? Do you have Skype? Call me, Zoha. Do you have Skype? Call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Call me. Or ask your Imam or your maybe your dad if you are afraid to debate me. Let him call me.
I mean, if you are, if you think you have the knowledge and the courage, please call me. I, I mean, now we are live. You can do it now, all right? Even if it's off topic, I don't care. I think uh, Zoha doesn't want to call in. Maybe we have another Muslim. Is there another Muslim here? Christians are dirty? Well, according to the Quran, we are Najis, right? Zoha is a kid? Oh, I see. Why are we? I mean, why would Allah create us, guys? Why would Allah create us, choosing Christians, give us the Torah and the Injil, and then call us Najis? Why? What kind of God is this? I mean, I think God is like a kid in a candy store. I can't say this enough, guys. Allah is like a kid in a candy store. He goes with his mom, and he grabs a candy, and then a couple seconds later, he changes his mind and wants to have a much more delicious candy that he sees. And he wants to have that one. He drops the old uh, candy. Right? He changes his mind. And he wants to have that new candy. So that's basically Allah in the Quran. First he talks lovely about the Jews and the Christians. And how he gave them the Torah and the Injil. And the Zabur, and then he calls us Najis. Why? What kind of God is this? He's an idol. He's a moon idol, right? He's not even worthy to be called God. He's nothing but a moon idol. Fadi Harun, why, why in the Quran it's mentioned Becca and was Mecca mentioned? Well, when we go to the Bible, when we go to the Bible, and the Bible mentions Becca, it's a place where you have olive trees, you have water, you, uh, it's in a valley, but the Mecca is not Becca. You know, Muhammad again tried to reconcile with the Jews and the Christians. To so show, sure, look, look, Becca and Mecca is the same, right? But Mecca is not in a valley. There is no water, right? There are no olive trees. And olive trees, guys, if you know, olive trees only grow around the Mediterranean Sea. Countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea, like Syria, like Lebanon, like Spain, like Italy, uh, all those countries, right? Those have olive trees. But Mecca is... All the way down south, right? Olive trees don't grow there. So here Muhammad busted himself. Any Muslim who wants to have a nice, respectful discussion, you can call me on Skype. Any Muslim. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notification when I am live or when I upload videos for you. I don't think we have a Muslim today. I think they are really busy sacrificing animals, right? Copying the Jews. But they are in denial. They are in denial. They say we don't copy the Jews. No, but they actually do copy the Jews. They copy the pagans, they copy everyone. Right? Yeah, the book of Allah eaten by an animal. Sultra, I think when uh, the sheep of Aisha, when she ate the book of Allah, that goat became the goat Al Karim, right? Because we have the Quran Al Karim and we have the goat Al Karim, right? Same sheep, yeah. And guys, I kid you not. One of the other Quranic surahs 
was as big as Surah Al-Baqarah. Remember Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, is the biggest chapter in the Quran. We, we found actually sources that are very trustworthy say that one of the other chapters of the Quran was as big as Surah Al-Baqarah. Where are those verses? Are you telling me that that same sheep of Aisha went in the hearts of the companions of Muhammad, the Sahaba, and he, that sheep was so mighty, like that mighty uh, ram that we mentioned in our uh, teaching of today, guys, that sheep was so mighty, it went in the hearts of the Muslim believers and it ate those ayahs. It was an inside job, but Aisha, her goat or sheep. It was nothing but an inside job, right? To corrupt the Quran of Allah. Do we have any Muslim? I think it was uh, Surah Al-Ahzab that was as big as chapter Al-Baqarah. Almost half of a complete surah is gone. Missing, guys. Missing. And Muslims always say, we have memorized the Quran by heart. How can half of a complete chapter, many ayahs, go missing? How is this possible? Right? How is this possible? We will mention that in our future teaching about the corruption of the Quran, guys. Don't worry. Any Muslim? Any Muslim who has the knowledge to face me in a nice, respectful debate? Fadi Harun is asking, how do you deal with Muslims who, when faced with what Allah, Muhammad, evil word, teaching, respond by saying, why you focus on this while you have tons of good teaching in Islam? I, I don't understand your question exactly, Fadi. Sorry. Uh, you mean about uh, Eid al-Adha? About today's teaching, uh, Fadi? Do you mean by about this teaching or what? Free cute. You're a Muslim, right? Why don't you call me free cute? You're the one who always keep cursing me, calling me all kind of names in the comment section under my videos. Now you have the time to man up Call me and end my career, free cute. Isn't isn't is isn't you isn't free cute a Muslim guys? Sorry if I'm mistaken, but I think he's a Muslim. Call in. I mean, you, you call yourself a man. You always curse me in the Arabic text. I never curse you back. God forgive you. I I, I always ask God to forgive people like you. Who cursing me. I really don't feel offended, guys. Sometimes people ask me, how do you have so such a big patience with Muslims? Well, guys, I'm doing this for like 14, almost 15 years now. And when you're doing this for so long, you'll get immune um, for cursing, for all kind of nasty behavior towards you. All kind of bad words towards you and your family and whatnot. You'll, you'll get immune, you know, because we have the truth. We can answer questions about our faith. But Muslims, they have to use bad language. The same language that Muhammad used when he said to the forefathers, uh, sorry, uh, uh, to his companions, if you're proud about Al Jahiliyyah, Go bite on the penis of your forefathers. This is what Muhammad said. So if Muhammad, the fake prophet of Islam, used foul language, I don't blame the Muslims who are following Muhammad. If Fadi Harun saying, like, when you show a Muslim how Muhammad killed Jews, taught to breastfeed adult men, jihad, etc., he says, why bring up those and not mention all good things in Islam? Well, uh, Islam is not only good about good things, right? We have to mention everything. We are not going to pick and choose what is only good, right, Fadi Harun? We will go to any source to show Muslims that this 
guy cannot be a true prophet. That Muhammad cannot be a prophet. And Muslims, you know, Muslims don't dare to question Muhammad. I mean, if in, in Islam, if you dare to question or try to criticize Muhammad, you will not be forgiven even if you ask for forgiveness. They will kill you. Even if you repent, they will kill you. But if you curse Allah and you criticize Allah and then you repent, they will not kill you. They will, might have mercy on you, with you. But when you criticize Muhammad, you will die, even if you repent. Right? Yeah, Muslims, are, yeah, because Fadi Harun, they don't dare to talk about this. They don't have the knowledge about the bad stuff in Islam that happened with Muhammad. They don't dare, right? And even the Quran says, don't question, don't ask questions. And the fear, don't forget the fear of the punishment of the grave in Islam is really a huge thing. I made a, a cartoon about it, guys, about the punishment of the grave. You should go and see it. Maybe one of the admins can put it in the text. It's really funny. And it's actually uh, true facts about how the punishment of the grave is in Islam. When two angels come and they start to hammer you down if you don't give the right answers to their questions. So f fear is really a big thing in Islam. They don't dare to question Muhammad. How, how do we save them? Well, we, we have to go to them. We have to go to those sources. We have to talk about them. This is why we are doing this, right? So if there are really sincere Muslims in 2019, they will listen. And I believe actually that there are, even at this moment, that we have Muslims listening and watching. Yeah. Thank you for the ayah, Phil Horeira. Chapter 5, 101 says, don't ask questions. So they don't dare to question their faith. They don't dare to question Muhammad. And punishment of the grave guys, it's really a uh, nice joke because two Jewish women came to troll Aisha, I kid you not. Jews love to troll Muhammad and his wives and they came to Aisha to troll her, to play with her mind and, she, and they asked her, the two Jewish women asked Aisha, have you heard about the punishment of the grave? Because you know, Jews don't believe in punishment of the grave. So it was a joke. And Aisha noticed these two women are playing with my mind. And she said, no, you're lying. And when the two Jewish women went away, Aisha went to Muhammad and she asked him about the punishment of the grave. And Muhammad, of course, every time he heard something from the Jews, he thought actually that it's true and he believed the Jews. So he implemented what he heard from Aisha and Aisha hearing it from the two Jews. Well, the Jews don't believe in it. Show me one Jew who believes in the punishment of the grave. So Muhammad, every time he was hearing something new, he put it in, in, in Islam, right? And till today, till today, Muslims are scared to death because of the punishment on the grave. You know, two Jews, uh, sorry, two angels coming in and hammering, starting to hammering you down. A... Uh, bold snake coming in inside your grave and biting you and tearing you apart and whatnot. It's really, uh, you know, Muhammad was nothing but a copy paste prophet, copying from here, copying from there, copying from Jews and Christians, copying from legend stories, copying from Persians. Right? And this is how Muhammad created Islam. Any Muslim? No Muslims? Ah, that's bad. I really thought maybe uh, this guy Ultimate Truth or uh, this Faris the kid, maybe they were here and they could have called in so we could have a nice discussion with them. But it seems they are hiding and slaughtering too. They are celebrating. Uh, and 
killing uh, today. Yeah, uh, maybe someone can post my video, guys, about the punishment. If you really like cartoons, you should watch that. It's called Punishment of the Grip. If you maybe you want to look it up. RC, do you history Islam calendar? What do you mean? Sorry, Excel. I don't understand your question. What do you mean by do you history Islam calendar? <clears throat> Sorry if I did not understand your question. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find uh, that video for you. I have made so many videos lately, guys. To be honest, if I started to make videos like David Wood or Christian Prince and others, I would have had thousands and thousands of videos by now. Because I used to debate a lot of Muslims. I made one mistake. And that mistake was I didn't record my debates. I didn't record the teaching that I gave on the Paul Talk platform because I used to teach and debate on that platform, right? So if I started earlier, I would have had many, many videos by now. But, you know, it's never too late. That's why they say, right? It's never too late to start recording videos and um, go live for you people for Muslims to show them that Islam is nothing but a cult where did I put that video let's see okay I think I found it Here's the link, guys. You can go and watch it when this live show is over. I just put the link for you for the punishment of the grave. It, I really put some time in that uh, video, guys. So if you're really uh, interested, you should watch that. I really recommend you to watch it. I really put a lot of time in that video. And you know how long it sometimes takes to record, to render videos. So live shows are much more easier for me. Any Muslim? Are we out of Muslims, guys? I mean, come on, we are now finally we are alive. We have Skype and you don't call in. Um, my friend Fadi, Fadi, you're the one who was calling uh, Christian Prince, right? And you're also the one that we spoke to that other day on Discord, right? You left Islam, right, Fadi? Did you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior already? I hope you accepted Jesus Christ. If I'm not mistaken, you are the one who I prayed with, right? On Discord. If you left Islam, my friend, please keep it for yourself. Stay safe. Right. Any Muslim? Well, we are not lucky today, guys, it seems. We are out of Islam. We are out of Muslims. Are you telling me we have so many Muslims? We have over 1 billion Muslims in the world and not one can call me and defend his fake prophet? Is everyone celebrating Eid? Al-Adha? Eid Al-Adha? Come on, call me on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. 
guys please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to keep being updated when i go live or upload videos also don't forget to smash that like button please Zoha, do you have a Muslim friend that uh, can call instead for you? Do you have any Muslim friend that you can uh, bring to debate me? I mean, I understand if you are scared or you are a woman, you don't want to call. I, I respect that. I know, you know, it's Islam. I know what Islam thinks of women. I know what the Prophet of Islam thinks of women. My women are half-brained, according to Muhammad. And I know it's not easy to be a woman in Islam, right? You don't have the rights that Muslim men do or have. Guys, I think I'll wrap this up. Sorry if I missed someone's question. Thank you for today, guys. Download our video. If you like some parts, you can cut it up. So, you don't need to ask me any questions about if my videos are copyrighted. My videos are your videos, guys. We are not doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for the truth. And only the truth will set us all free. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is a fake prophet. Thank you for watching and God bless, guys. See you next time.